So after being successfully funded back in 2018, people finally started receiving their Atari VCS in December of 2020. I got mine a little after Christmas, so let's dive in and see what this little thing's all about. The Atari VCS was a crowdfunding gaming system that launched in the spring of 2018 on Indiegogo. It was successfully funded in June of 2018, raising over $3 million and having some extra funding via pre-orders and add-ons down the line. It was originally positioned as a PC gaming console hybrid and was going to change gaming just like Atari did in the 70s. It even says that right on the box, that you're going to do all these things like you've never done it before. It had several delays and unexpected changes before finally being delivered to backers starting December of 2020. The original all-in version of the system that comes with 8GB of RAM, a 32GB SSD, modern controller, and the classic joystick was $339 before shipping and it now retails as a pre-order for $389 on sites like Walmart.com. So let's see what we finally got and if you should consider pre-ordering the system. First, let's take a look at the hardware. So the design of the system itself is actually rather nice and what really attracted me to it in the first place. It is small and sleek and it's a wonderful modern take on the original Atari 2600 design with the wood on the front and a ribbed body. It's super light since there isn't much in there. An original Wii is probably heavier than this. You have two USB 3 ports in the front for your controllers when they need to be wired up. Turning it around are two more USB 3 ports that can be used for things like external hard drives. There's also the power button, not a fan of this placement, an ethernet port, HDMI port, your power jack, and that's it. So this whole console is running off the AMD embedded Ryzen R1606G. It is an SoC from 2019 that is based off the Vega 3 and it's 2.6 GHz. It's very similar to the Ryzen 3 3200U. It has a total of 8GB of RAM installed that is split for CPU and GPU tasks since the Ryzen chip doesn't have any video memory on its own. This means there isn't actually much memory for the graphics. You can see here how Steam sees the specs for the system. But it is upgradable to 32 gigabytes of RAM. But you'll have to open up the whole system to do that. It only has a 32 gigabyte SSD, so if they start pushing actual games to the store, you're going to need to add more. Luckily, it can use external drives, and there is a slot for another SSD. The controllers are nice, but have some flaws for being priced at $60 a piece like any other controller. The modern one feels fine. I like the sticks and the buttons feel pretty good. The texture is nice on the plastic as well. I do not like the triggers. They feel a bit off and cheap. But the biggest offender is the D-pad, which is just plain awful to use with the circle design and little bumps. The joystick is a really cool design. I love the LEDs that follow the stick as it moves. The two buttons are okay, but not the best. And the joystick also spins for those vintage Atari games that might use a trackball. Mine unfortunately does not seem to work right and it doesn't feel great either way. Worst of all, the controller is super light, which makes it feel real cheap. These are both made by Power A, I believe, and it isn't their best work. I do not like that they use these USB cables that are completely standard connections, except that they had to put a notch in there to make them only fit each other. There isn't enough plastic in the controller USB port to make it impossible to make another cable fit, but it's completely unnecessary. At least they're really long, so they're really great for keeping connected while sitting on a couch but I honestly wouldn't pay $60 for these controllers. So the VCS on its own boots to a custom OS that tries to make it feel like a console experience. It is very obviously just a custom Linux distribution. You can occasionally see the kernel loading before the Atari logo pops up. To me, it feels more like Steam Big Picture Mode or something you would have for a RetroPie more than a true OS on a gaming console. As a side note, my very first boot stalled and crashed, which threw me into a boot loop, and that doesn't seem to be an uncommon problem. Apparently, the OS is based on a version of Debian used for entertainment centers and cars, and I'm not surprised. I am 100% not a fan of these boxes, and the navigation is boring and stiff. The settings you have access to are also very basic, but it does run well, and things are snappy. It is a good thing that there isn't much in the store yet either, because it's pretty awful. I can't imagine trying to navigate this for a lot of games. It reminds me a lot of the old Ouya app store. It was originally marketed that you could add your own app since it's Linux based, but there is currently no way to sideload anything. Everything must come from the Atari store. Everything on the Atari OS side runs well since they are all currently very small and light apps in indie games. By the way, the Netflix, Hulu, HBO and others aren't even the real apps like you would see on an iOS device or an actual console just wrappers for the web page. It does come with the Atari Vault pre-installed, which allows you to play some Atari 2600 and arcade classics. The app is fine and the games are what you would expect. None of these are hard to run on any hardware now. 
I'm not going to show too much because this has been out for years on other platforms. Here it is just updated to mention use with the two controllers that came with the system and a few other minor things. Missile Command Recharge was also free in the App Store and it's Missile Command. It's a fun distraction for a bit, but certainly nothing anyone hasn't seen before despite only coming out this year. The Neon update to a classic Atari Vector Arcade isn't a new concept. You can also get this on other platforms such as Steam, Nintendo Switch, Android, and iOS. I also tried the AntStream app, which has a 30-day free trial for any backer. It's an interesting concept being a streaming service but only for classic games. It is essentially what everyone has wanted the virtual console to be for a while. The service mostly has Commodore, Spectrum, Arcade, and Sega Genesis Mega Drive games listed. You can definitely tell this was developed for the European market based on the selection of games. There are a lot of titles I have never heard of, and ones that end up being different versions that I've never played, which is both a good and bad thing. But it runs well, and the few games I have tried loaded quickly, and I was able to play without any feelings of lag and without any hiccups. But again, this is just a novelty, as this is just streaming emulation. Obviously, unlike current cloud gaming, where the current gen game is running on actual hardware or a beefy PC that I'm connected to, no one is booting a ZX Spectrum and connecting it to a server. A game that did stand out was the demo for Unsung Warriors. It is currently in development and looks to be getting ready to do its own Kickstarter. If Atari really wants this to happen, they need to be funding these games and getting them finished and in the store. But I digress. The game is fun and a cute little side-scrolling action title. Looks like you have some weapons you can purchase and switch out and you'll have some magic items as well. It may even have a bit of a Metrovania vibe when it's done where you gain abilities to make platforming easier. I like the visual presentation, even if it feels a bit stiff right now, and the sound design is nice as well. But again, this isn't anything that doesn't already exist in mass on Apple Arcade, Switch, and Steam. In fact, this demo is already available on Steam and Itch, so go try it out if you like the look of it. So despite not being able to sideload anything on the Atari OS, which means it's very bare right now, you can dual boot either Linux or Windows. It has to support secure boot though, as Atari has locked things down and even though people have asked, it doesn't look like we'll be getting the key. So no gamer OS or anything fun. You basically have the standard Debian, Ubuntu, and Windows 10 with a few others. I tried Ubuntu and Windows 10, and Ubuntu oddly gave me the most problems of the two with a few driver and boot issues I had to correct. This isn't a fault of the VCS, just pointing it out. With Ubuntu, I also have to plug in a keyboard every time to boot into the BIOS and select the drive. Windows just boots if the boot drive is plugged in. Gaming on Linux still is hit or miss, as I'm sure you know, and games that may run well on Windows take a lot more resources or at least a lot more tweaking. I tried Cuphead, which booted and ran without any problems. I guess this shouldn't be surprising. Despite the top-notch presentation, it is still technically a lighter indie title. I also tried Hollow Knight, which ran perfectly. Again, I'm not surprised, as it's certainly not a resource-heavy game, but glad to see two amazing titles run without a hitch. For fun, I also booted up DuckTales Remastered. This, of course, ran perfectly. After that, things started going downhill. The RAM is split 6 to 2, so anything heavier than what I just mentioned is going to have problems. I tried Bioshock Infinite since it has a Linux port, and despite it not being the best port, it is a game from 2013, and the Linux port is from 2015. This should be easy to run on modest settings by now. Well, it isn't, and it didn't, as you can see here. With everything set to low at 1080p, it just chugged. I got counts as low as 7 frames per second during combat, and that's just pitiful. Knocking it down to 720p stabilized things, but it still tanked to around 20 frames per second on occasion. Even though it could run around 30 frames per second, it was just unstable. I'd call this basically unplayable. Half-Life 2, of course, has a much higher frame rate, but it also is just unstable at 1080p at high settings. Lots of screen tearing and jitter. It just couldn't lock a frame rate, making it an unpleasant experience. But this can probably be worked into submission to lock it down and be a great gaming experience on the VCS. But then I tried Soma at both 768 and 1080, and it ran like hot garbage, and I wasn't even in a very intense part of the game. I tried this one on Windows and had a similar experience with both versions. Don't plan on playing this one. Speaking of Windows, with that installed, things got a little better. As I mentioned, the games tend to have lower minimum requirements, and Windows 10 was doing a better job managing the resources the VCS has. Booting up Bioshock Infinite again and setting it to 720p with the medium preset had the game running around 40 to 50 frames per second during combat with a few other dips. So not ideal for a first person shooter, but still very manageable. This is completely playable now in my opinion, though of course 1080p at a stable 60 frames per second for a 7 year old game would be much more preferable. 
I also tried the original Bioshock just because I could, and I ran into a glitch where no sound loaded and I couldn't start the actual first part of the game. So I just stood there watching the two NPCs look at each other. But hey, the FPS seemed okay. Again, not locked at 60, but around 40 to 50, and at 1080p with details set to high. Sonic Generations was the next game I tried, and it played perfectly. Again, 768 with reflections and shadows set to low. But it ran smoothly, and I didn't feel any major lag or frame drops. It just isn't super impressive being that it's sub 1080p in a game from 2011, but I was glad to see something running really well. I didn't capture footage of the other games I tried on Linux, but they all are fine. You can play Hollow Knight all day long without problems. Look, I think it's a fun concept and a nice looking console, but honestly, it is a disappointing package overall. The current Atari OS side doesn't really offer anything and adding Windows or Linux is still very limited. Sure, you can find plenty of lighter games to play, but at the launch price, you should buy a Nintendo Switch or a PS4, unless you really want something to tinker with and you want a big emulation box. And sure, it could be a bit better if you add more RAM into it and a bigger hard drive, but is that really worth the extra money? It doesn't make much sense to me put an extra $200 into something that already costs as much as something more powerful and well-built that can run incredible games of all varieties. With the extra cost to upgrade, you can almost get the PS5 or one of the next Xbox systems. Let that sink in. So a couple other things I forgot to mention about my time with the VCS. I did get Doom 2016 installed on both Linux and Windows, but on Linux it ran 20, 25 frames per second, and I was at 768. And I wasn't in a big open area or in heavy combat. It was just the intro section. On Windows, it would launch and then immediately crash and give me an error about the engine. Could I have gotten it to run on Windows with some research and tinkering? Maybe, but it just didn't seem worth the effort when it's probably gonna run 768 at 20 frames per second. When it comes to the controller, I couldn't really get it to work on Bluetooth outside of the Atari OS side. When it was wired, it worked fine and it recognized it as a general you know, gamepad, Xbox controller, that kind of thing. But on Bluetooth, they wouldn't recognize the triggers, most of all, sometimes not the buttons, things like that. The weird part was it has an Xbox emulation mode if you hold these two down, but Windows still wouldn't recognize it as an Xbox controller. So as a wireless Bluetooth controller on Windows, it's pretty useless. Anyway, that's all I've got. I really can't suggest anybody pick this up unless you're really into collecting or a hobbyist and that kind of stuff. It's just not really worth the price. But if you have any questions, I'll be happy to answer them. And if you want me to try something else, I'll see what I can do. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you next time.